Hi guys, welcome to chapter one, the basics of Unity. Hopefully you've gone to the website, you've created an account on unity3d.com, uh, uh, you've downloaded Unity, uh, you've got it installed, and you're ready to go. If you don't, you probably want to stop the video now and go download Unity. This video works a lot better if you do it while you're playing in Unity. All right, for this demo, um, I'm using Unity 5.1.1F1. So when you go to the Unity website, I think right now they have 5.1.2. Um, obviously, whenever you watch this, uh, just hit older versions. Uh, and when we go to the Unity site, I'll walk you through that. Uh, and you can find 5.1.1.F1. And that way, all your stuff matches mine. You know, the difference between 5.1.1 and 5.1.2 uh, is very minor. You know, like there might have been a bug fix or something that somebody reported, or there's something very specific that they fixed. Um, it's, it's when they jump from 4 to 5 that you get the big changes. So don't feel like, oh, I'm not using the newest version of Unity, blah, 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 I don't have all the features. You get the idea. All right, so in mine, um, when I open up my Unity, I think my sample project, my, my example project's still there, and then there's a couple other projects. Um, don't worry about that. Yours might not exactly look like mine, but it'll be close. All right, so open up Unity, and when you first do, I think the very first time that you open it up, um, I've got the, I, I clicked on, like, when I installed it, you know, include the, the sample project, and I took the screenshot. Um, if you do not have a sample project, it'll, uh, it'll either ask you to make a new one or else you want to click on new project over here. So with each project you make, if you go to the Unity folder, there's a, inside the Unity folder, there's another folder called projects and all your individual projects are there, which is nice because then you can uh, like move them back and forth between PCs and do things like that. So you want to create a new project. And when you create a new project, then this window pops up, and you just want to name it Testes or whatever you want to name it, um, and then set the location wherever you're going to send it to, and make sure that you click on 2D down here, because again, this is the 2D design class. And then click on Create Project. Now, if you did everything right, your screen should look like this. So this is the default Unity layout, and almost nobody that I know uses Unity like this. So later on in the video, we're going to move some stuff around. But for now, you can leave it like that. All right, now we're going to go to the Unity store. So don't you don't have to close Unity. Um, go to the Unity store, and if you don't know where, like if you can't find the button, go open Google and hit Unity Asset Store, and you're going to search the store for 2D Platformer. All right, let's do that together. So before I leave, you want it want uh, you want it to look like this. You want to see a big spaceship in the middle. You want to see this little bean dude <laughs> and some aliens, and it says 2D Platformer. All right, so I got my Unity open. Now, in this one, um, I was just creating a block to show you how to move some stuff around, but we'll get to that later. All right, so I got my blank Unity open. Now, obviously, my Unity looks a little bit different from yours because I have mine the way I like it, and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. So leave yours like it is and open up a browser tab and type in Unity Asset Store. And then you'll see Asset Store dash Unity, and it looks like that. All right, now you're going to type in 2D, and I think it's underscore, platformer. Oh, that didn't work. Let me go back. All right, so just type in platformer here in the search box. Duh. So hold on. Platformer. And if I look around, there's my, now there's one. That might be the one that I need. It might be the Kai platform. Let me make sure. So there's, there it is. 2D platformer. So look for the one that just says just 2D platformer. And click on that. And it should look like that. Remember, you do not want the one that says, wait for it. Da, 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 da. You do not want this one. The one that says Kai 2D platformer. You want just 2D platformer. So that's the one we want. Now, anytime you go to the asset store, obviously you have to sign in with your username and login. So hopefully you have that. If you didn't, make sure that you log it in or that you create one and, and pause the video. And then you're going to sit, say, "Hey, open a Unity." Anytime you come to the asset store, and what's cool about the Unity asset store is um, there's so many free and low-priced assets. Like if I go to complete projects and tech demos, uh, there's not a whole lot there. Uh, tutorials. You know, free, 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 950, 25 bucks, free, 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 free. There's a lot of reasonably placed. And this one, that this Cody's Lab, actually takes the demo that they give you. Like, um, if you go to learn, 
and tutorials. Uh, the space shooter. So everything for the space shooter is here. But if you spend fifteen dollars, and I'm sorry, this you can actually click on it, and there's videos for how to do everything, and they walk you through the process. But if you want a little bit more help, because obviously you're you're new to Unity, you can click on that Cody's lab and complete projects. All right, where's Cody's tutorials and Cody's lab? So for fifteen bucks, he walks you through and he has it set up where it, it's interactive and asks you questions, and then it, it kind of like shows you some stuff and then says, okay, what would you do here? So it's more of a learning environment than the other one. So that one just shows you how to make the game. Um, when you put the Cody thing in there, there's like an extra tutorial that kind of walks you through things step by step to make sure that you understand what, what you're doing. All right, so enough about the Unity store. And then, oh, one more thing. The reason we picked Unity over the Unreal Engine is Unity has been free a lot longer. You know, Unreal just went free January 2015, I think it was. So it hasn't been free for a year yet at the time of this video, where Unity has always been free. And so there's so many more books demos, videos, uh, assets for Unity than there are for Unreal. Now Unreal has nicer graphics and if you're going to make like the the best looking 3D game I would still recommend Unreal. But once you learn Unity and you know how to make a character move and you know how to add a, add a collision and that kind of stuff you can easily go over to Unreal and pick it up just like that. It's kind of like once I learn Microsoft Office, I can go to any other word processor or spreadsheet, and I know what I'm doing. I just got to figure out where the different p tabs are, that kind of stuff. All right, so again, put a uh, platformer in here. Find the one we want. As you can tell, I'm a little long-winded. All right, so when the platformer comes up, it's going to look like this, a little spaceship and a bunch of stuff. And click on Open in Unity. Uh, again, always check the price of things, see where they're from, what they're rated, um, what version of Unity that they're for. And if you scroll down, like you'll see all the different assets that are in the pack. Uh, and then if anybody leaves comments, you'll find a whole bunch of comments. So open in Unity. Now, when you click open in Unity, it should have opened like that. Sorry there, I lost the, <laughs> the video for a second. I had no idea what I'm doing. All right, so it should have opened up like this. And then you're going to hit on Import. Ah. And then it's going to pop up a window somewhere. Import complete. Come on. Oh. Now, if for some reason when you hit Import and the window comes back, you do not see this. Move this window out. A lot of times it'll pop up like that. And you're like, crap, what happened? It didn't do anything. You need to move this window over, leave everything highlighted, and then hit import. And now it's moving the entire, all the assets into Unity for you. Alright, I'm going to pause while this loads. Now, if you update any, if you import any older assets for like 4.3, like the, this one was made for 4.3 and up, uh, you'll get this. And just hit go ahead, you know, I made it back, because remember, um, you have a, a brand new project, you're not going to screw anything up. Alright, so at this point, that box goes away, everything runs, you click on that, oh, you know, I made it back up, it's okay, and then nothing happens. You're like, well, what the fudge did I just do? Well, let me show you. Alright, so you can close the asset store now. And now you'll see a whole bunch of stuff down here uh, in the project pane, depending on where your project pane is. So you're going to go down here to the project pane, and in your case it might be somewhere else, but look for the one that says has a tab that says project. Find the scene folder, and then in there should be a level. Double click level, and then your level should load. If for some reason something didn't work, just close everything up, don't save anything, open Unity back up, then open up a web browser, follow through the slides, open up a new window, click on import, if if this important package thing doesn't show up right away, just move this over uh, and that'll uh, unhide the folder. Make sure all the boxes are checked. Click on import, let it load, hit, you know, I made a backup, go ahead, and then you're all set. So then at that point, you know, you can close the asset store. Um, you should see something new in your window. Actually, you might not see anything new in your window, but you'll see a bunch of items listed in the project tab. But nothing at that point will be showing in the scene window. So your Unity will look like this. So again, your project thing will be over here on the on the left. 
So go to the, the project window um, and click on, let's see, what we're seeing is a, is a blank thing. So go to the project window, find scenes, and load the first scene in there. Or for those of you guys that like menus, you can click on file and then open scene, and then go to the scene folder. And then in the scene folder there should be a level, and then boom. So that's what you should be seeing now with the default configuration of Unity. So yours looks a little bit different from mine. Your hierarchy is way over here on the left where mine's on the right. Uh, and your project is on the left where mine's over here on the right. Um, but again, we'll fix that in just a second. All right, so if everything worked right, you should be able to go up here to the game controller and click on play. And then the game, the full game should be loaded and it should work for you. And then when you're done, just click on that play again. Now, if for some reason when you hit play, it doesn't, you can't see anything, click here in the scene window and then scroll your mouse wheel out so you can see everything and then your guy kind of shows up so hit play huh. Huh. Oh. Huh. I defy you. Oh. Huh. all right you get the idea all right um, hopefully yours is working uh, when you hit play Mine does not appear to be shooting, and for some reason the monsters all Ow. stick to me, uh. and I can't get them off when they come on. Ow. Get off me, get off no. me! Uh. Oh. And then if you fall, you die. But he's supposed to be able to shoot too. But it's enough that you get the idea, so now we can kind of go through the different screens. Alright, so congrats, you just made your first game in Unity. Hopefully it worked. If it doesn't, just close it and re-download it and see if that works. Um, and then from there... Um, you can play the game a little bit, um, but whenever you're ready, start the video back up and we'll go. So the reason I, I do this is one, to show you how easy it is to import assets from a Unity store. Two, um, these windows and stuff make a lot more sense if there's some content in the windows. So let's talk about changing your display a little bit. So each tab or pane, sometimes I refer to these as panes because they're, they're both little window panes. You know, this is a little window pane, this is a little window pane. Some people refer to them as tabs. So this would be the scene tab that controls the scene pane. And this would be the hierarchy tab that controls the hierarchy pane. And this would be the project tab that controls. Any one of these can be moved somewhere else. Uh, and then you can resize them. And do other weird stuff with them. I'm trying to grab some piece here, but I, I can't seem to grab wherever that moves. But you get the idea. So what I want you to do is I want you to move stuff around so that your screen, um, this console thing, I get it to the uh, down to the ground. There we go. So your screen kind of looks like this, and this is kind of the layout that most people use. Scene here is where you're going to build the game. And then here's where you can actually like see what the game is actually going to look like you know, to the player. And then the console window here is like for your messages. And then Hierarchy has the different game objects. The Inspector pane has the components of the game objects. So if I go to Bazooka and I want it to do something, um, I add that something over here. So it doesn't make sense to have the Hierarchy pane over here on the left. And then every time you click on something, you got to go all the way over here to the right and click on something. So it's just easier to go back and forth between these windows than it is to go from here to here to here, that kind of stuff. So see if you can do that. So pause the video here and see if you can make it all look like mine. Remember, it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Um, just get it close. Make sure the scene is over here on the top left, followed by game, followed by console. Um, hierarchy is up here, and then project, and then the inspector is over down here on the right. Now, if for some reason you delete a window, like, oh, hey, let me go move the hierarchy window. Uh, oh, crap, where'd it go? What do I do now? Ah! Just go to window here on the menu bar and then find the name of it and pop it right back in. Then you can grab the tab, pop it in, resize it, and you're all set. So the Unreal Engine works almost exactly like this too, which is kind of nice. So again, as long as I know one piece of software, if I know one word processor, I can probably get my way through the other word processors. If I know one spreadsheet program, I can wiggle my way through the other spreadsheets, that kind of stuff. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you got your stuff looking like mine. So first, we're going to talk about the menu bar. So the menu bar is up here. So this little line where it says File, Edit, Assets, that's called the menu bar. And those options are mostly covered in your book. Most of this is, diff is um, ways to add things you know, to the game that we can also do in our different panes. So we're going to focus on doing them, uh, I guess, more efficiently. All right, so 
Now we're going to talk about this thing here. Now this little this little group of five boxes is called the transition tool. And the transition tool has the hand tool where I can move different things. Hey. Uh, it's got the up and down uh, so I can you know modify things position. It's got the rotate tool so I can rotate them. So let me click on something. Let's grab our hero. So if I ah, click on hero and then I can rotate hero using that green line. And if I hit up and down, I can move him up and down. Or so you get the idea. So this is the hand tool, the one on the left, and this is the the translate tool is what that's called. I don't, because you're translating between the three different dimensions. This is called the rotation tool, where I use that to rotate the different objects in my game. This is the scale tool, where I can change the scale of an object to make them fatter or skinnier, that kind of stuff. And then this is called the rec tool. And the rec tool is used kind of either to focus the camera on something, um, to put it back into normal mode so I can do other things. Um, so we typically leave that on uh, in the, on the rec tool. Now from there, we go here where it says center and local. And these are called the transform gizmos. Now the center is, and these are both like toggles, so I can either go center or pivot. And then I can do local or world global. Sorry, local or global. So the center button allows me to handle an object from its center, or if I click on pivot, um, it allows me to manually set the pivot point where that character is going to rotate from, where is his rotation axis is going to be. Do I want him to spin evenly, you know, between his head and feet, or do I want his feet to be planted and him to pivot on his feet? Does that make sense? So that's where, like, whatever game object I have, that's where I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna set the rotation point. Now, the local and global thing is a little bit more complicated. All right, so the local and world um, is the object's location relative to me or relative to the world. So here's kind of an example. Um, on the left side here, this is A's location. Um, in reference to the world. What's the reference point? Where am I looking at A from? So if I'm looking at it from a world view, A is centered right up and down in the middle of the screen. But if I look at A's location in reference to me, and I'm at location C, then A is actually on the little bit to the left side of the screen. So most of the time, we typically just leave that on local, um, and we kind of view things like from the camera's kind of point of view. So we don't really touch that one much, um, but again, later on when we get into the advanced simulation and gaming thing, we may start playing with that tab a little. All right, and then in the top center of our screen, we have our game controllers button, and that's where we do play, pause, or step up. Um, we can step up to different levels or different things like that. So that's where we can actually test our game in the simulation environment to see if it's doing what we want to do. Is my character moving fast enough? Is my gun shooting? That kind of stuff. All right, next, going along the top, um, I have my different drop-downs. Now, layers is kind of self-explanatory. Remember, we, we simulate um, 3D in 2D games by adding layers. So I can run in front of things, uh, I can run behind things, that kind of stuff. So I can have a background, I can have a character, I can have a foreground, um, I can have the UI. So I can have different layers. So there's where you actually can, you can create your layers, edit, I can hit edit, um, and I can make my different layers. And if I click Layout, it allows me to change the, the windowed view, to change the layout of the windows. Do I want 2 by 3 do I want split, that kind of stuff. And then Account is your Unity account. So I can either go to my account or sign out, you know, that kind of stuff. Or I can upgrade to Pro. Hooray! All right, so that kind of covers the, the very top. Now click here on the Scene view and scroll out as far as you can. And you can kind of see now some of the magic is gone. I can tell now that he just put a picture in the background. He just made a big block of brown for the, the water. Then he added these little wave things in there. And then he put the saucer and uh, probably the gates up. Actually, he probably put the two castles in. Made those collidable so you can't walk past those. And that kind of like corners everybody in. And then he put these little girders in there, put the spaceship in there, and made it so like when you hit the water, your character's dead. So it looks pretty simple. All you need is a background picture you know, some items for the left and right side, and then some obstacles in your game, drop a character in there and some enemies, and you've got your own 2D platformer. So once you guys get the hang of this, I mean, you can actually pump these games out. Now, assuming you can get assets, um, and if you know an art person, that would kind of help. Uh, but there's a lot of assets on the Unity Store. There's a lot of asset packs on the Unity Store. 
Um, there are other people um, in this class that are good artists um, that might not want to code uh, and they're looking for somebody to partner with. So there's a lot of options for you at this point. All right, let's talk about the scene view. So we're going to talk about this pane here, the scene pane or the scene tab, however you want to call it. Now, the scene, um, you've got scene and game. Most of the time, game is sometimes jammed in there like that. Uh, and then you got to like, kind of go back and forth between the two. Uh, but I typically have mine. Uh, it's so hard to get that right. Like that. All right, so here in the scene view, um, we've got shaded. Uh, and we can do shading and do different stuff. We're not going to touch that right now. We're going to move on to these other tabs. I can either, and again, I'm just scrolling the mouse wheel from the, uh, as long as I clicked in the scene view, you can scroll the mouse wheel. I can do 2D or a 3D perspective. Now, obviously, this is a 2D game, so the 3D perspective doesn't work. So if I click back on 2D, and it doesn't say 3D, it just, uh, it just the highlight goes away. And so there's that 3D view. Notice it just, it's gray like everything else. And if I click on it, then it kind of turns white. So that's 2D or 3D. Obviously, if you're building a 3D game, you want that in 3D, or if you're building a 2D game, you want that in 2D. All right, and then I can toggle the different lighting effects. And then this is, I can turn the audio on and off and jam. Uh, and this last one is um, the, to toggle the lens and flare effects, which I don't think, that, yeah, this game does not have any. So 2D, 3D, um, lighting, audio, and then um, uh, skybox, fog, lens, flare effects. So not a lot to do in this one. You'll do a lot of stuff over here in the hierarchy pane. In the hierarchy pane, this is where we store our game objects. All of these items are in the game. And many of these items, like the hero, has many, many sub or child items. So the hero has a bazooka, the hero has a hat, his left eye, his right foot. So in this case, the hero is all put together from different components. I mean, his body is not just one model. It's a left foot, a right foot, an eye, that kind of stuff. And then there's a ground check to make sure he's on the ground, a gun, um, a bazooka. So the bazooka is probably the art asset, and then the gun probably controls how the gun fires. So game design is a lot like coding. You know, we have to break each task down into its smallest parts um, and then code the part. So like you don't just make a gun that shoots, you make the artwork for a gun, and then you make the um, effect of the gun. And then you might make the uh, colored effect, or, you know, like I, I, want, I want to make the gun, I want to make the gun shoot, and I want to shoot the bullets to look like this. I want the bullets to do this much damage. So there's already four different components just to a gun. So if you're good at puzzles, you'll be great at game design and coding. All right, so the hierarchy view. Um, this is where we add different elements to the game. So if you want to put something in the game, we move it here and put it in the hierarchy view. So here I can click on hero, and then I can grab my hero, and oops, let me click on the little hand tool, and ah, what are you doing dude? Go over here, do something. So then I can move him around. So this is where the hierarchy view pane is where we select the item that we want to work on. All right, the, the hierarchy pane works directly with the inspector pane. Now, the inspector pane has the components for the game object. So anytime I create a game object, whatever I attach to the game object or whatever I add, the different parts that I add, will all be shown up here in the inspector. So here's the location of the hero. So if I click on hero, here's the location of the hero. Here's the script that controls him. Here's the rigid body, the 2D collider, the circle collider, um, his animations, his health information, uh, the, the bombs that come out of him when he shoots, and then here's the audio. So when I add those different components to that game object, they're all added in the inspector. So the hierarchy and the inspector work together. We typically create a game object in the hierarchy view, and then we add components in the inspector. So that's why these two should really be side by side. So that you can click stuff and go right there and kind of have them both together so you're not looking at the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. Remember, in a lot of places, um, you have two and three monitors. And if your game is on the center monitor, you know, you want your hierarchy and inspector pane over there on the right side monitor together, so you can just kind of focus on that. All right, next we have the project pane down here. And the project pane is kind of like your Windows Explorer. That's where all your files and folders and stuff are going to be uh, for easy access. So, like, if I want to grab a prefab and grab a character and pop it in as a game object, I can just grab it and pop it in. 
Um, so that's where we store all our files and folders. And then everything in Unity is just drag and drop. So if this is a prefab, which means it has all the components with it, I can just pop it in here. Now later on we'll talk more about prefabs and the beauty of prefabs, but for now a prefab is a game object that has other stuff already coded into it that I can then you know, pop into my hierarchy view and just and boom, he's kind of like ready to go. They're also nice because I can make changes to the prefab and that'll propagate to any other occurrences of the prefab. So if I have you know, uh, a hero, let's say I, well, let's, let's talk about the enemies. Let's say I have 15 enemies that are on my screen and if I change something on the prefab, all 15 enemies get that change. I don't have to go in and play with them individually. So it's kind of neat. All right. And then I have the console pane. Now, the console pane uh, is used for showing errors and warnings and to help you with debugging your stuff. Um, you know, if I load my game and I see some weird assets um, like this, um, assets, my enemy, warning, uh, rigid body is obsolete. Um, so whatever that was uh, didn't work in Unity 5.1.1. I think the last time I loaded this project it was like Unity 5.0.1 or something like that so maybe the new game just doesn't maybe that the 2D rigid body doesn't work now um, in Unity 5.1.1 uh, for this version of the game. So if you loaded your game and your guy can't shoot um, either then that's probably what it is. Alright when you're playing with Unity if you want to if I didn't cover something or you want more information on something or while you're working on your project you, you need more information you can always go help uh, and then Unity Manual, and they have a complete online manual that kind of shows everything. So if I go to um, the UI and overview and basic layout, this this shows me, you know, like here's what the rec tool does, and here's what rec transform does, and here's what the pivot button does. So if I didn't explain something to you and you want to learn more or something like that, um, come here and check this out. So there's a ton of stuff networking, adding audio, um, different animation information, um, but you get the idea. And again, I got to that by clicking on Help Unity Manual. You can also check out the slides um, if you're like here at school and you don't have Unity with you, um, you're in the, the Cal Lab or something like that, just type in um, docs.unity3d.com slash manual and that'll bring it up or just go to the Unity website and hit on, hit on documentation, that'll take you there too. Uh, and that way you can kind of check out stuff in Unity. All right, and then give me a remember, don't forget, um, if for some reason I lose a pane, uh, I can click on Window and pop in the new Window pane in there. So at this point, I want you to right-click Project and hit Close Tab. And then I want you to find that new tab. And if for some reason you forget, go ahead and grab it. Hit Window and Project and then just drag it wherever you want it. Ah. Oop, that didn't work. There we go. So sometimes you gotta fiddle with them. Alright, so that's Unity the nutshell, or a nutshell. Um, this is my menu bar. These are my transform tools. Um, I forget what the heck I can call those. This is the game controller. The hierarchy window is where we have game objects. The inspector is where we add items to game objects. The project is where we store our files and folders. Um, this is where we, what, what, what the user is going to see in the game. This is where we work on the game. And this is the window we help for debugging. All right. Now remember, your final class project, you're not going to have, at this point, we're not going to have a final exam. Um, our final project is going to be the 2D game that we make um, through this book. So this week you're going to start your project. Uh, and if you look in chapter 1 as you read it, at the bottom of page 25 in your textbook, uh, or the book, um, you're going to follow those steps and create um, your game called 2D Platform Game. Uh, and make sure everything lines up so it's 2D underscore and platform underscore. And make sure you use the exact names and places for files and folders that the book tells you. If you don't, when you import your assets, you'll end up importing assets into different files and folders and different projects, and your stuff won't work. And then you'll be like, hey, it's all sucks, blah, it's all the teacher's fault, because I, I didn't listen, but you get the idea. All right, so anyway, so make sure everything works. If it says 2D underscore platform underscore game, then make it 2D underscore platform underscore game. All right, so, um, and that way you can, and then when you're done, 
um, you can copy your project to a flash drive. But now, this is not a face-to-face -face class, so if you're in the online version, uh, you don't have to worry about copying your, your flash drive. Uh, but if you're here in the face-to-face -face class, you want to copy your project every week onto your flash drive when you're done so that you can bring it into class in case we work on it. Or if we have some extra time in class, you can work on it. Now, remember, your book was written, I think, with version 4.3 or something in mind. So by the time the guy, you know, 4.3 is out and he writes the book, um, and then he finishes it, and then he sends it to the editor, and then the editor edits it, uh, and then they send it to the printer, and then the printer sends it out, uh, or where they print it, and then they send it out to different places and make it available. Anyway, so now we're on version 5. So everything is not going to line up perfectly. So I'm trying to follow through and giving you guys the um, things that you need to skip or add to make everything work out correctly. So it's so on page 25. You're going to skip step four. Um, if you go to Edit Preferences General, um, you'll see that whatever they ask you for in step four is no longer an option in version five. So I don't remember offhand what step four was on page 25, but they made it a default and it's no longer an option. I'm sorry, step four. Now in step five, before you start, make sure you're in the Asset Parent object and not in the Scene folder that you just created. So what I'm saying there is make sure in step five that your highlight is here on the asset folder and not here in the scene folder where it kind of left you on like step three or something. So I think in step three it left you on scene or something, but somewhere it left you on, on scene. And then we skip step four and then we go into step five and if you import here, that's not what you want. You want to go to the asset folder and then do what step five tells you. So make sure you highlight that. All right, and also in step seven, click on Add Component and then select Miscellaneous and you'll find the animator there. Um, when he walked through the animator part, uh, and, or adding the animator to the, to the inspector pane, he wasn't clear that you have to hit Add Component. He just says, you know, click on Miscellaneous, but Miscellaneous is not an option. You wanna click on the little box that says Add Component and then go to Miscellaneous and then you'll find the animator there. So let me show you what that looks like. So in step seven, they have you click on some game asset, and then you go to add component, and then you want to find miscellaneous, and then that's where you'll find the animator. Um, he's not clear, he just says add an animator to the game object. But when you go there and you click there, there is no animator. You're like, crap, where's that? Um, click on miscellaneous, and then the animator will show up. All right, so make sure for this week you get started on your project um, and you, you start, uh, you read chapter one, or make sure you read all the directions first for building the, for the first step of your game, and then start following through. And remember, check out my instructions again about the different changes. All right, let's talk about this week's lab that you're gonna do. All right, if you go to Angel and you hit Materials, you'll see that there's a software program called Tiled. And Tiled, it's a nice 2D map making utility that we can use to make maps for our 2D games. Um, and then you can actually import those right into Unity. So while you're downloading Tile, um, you can also download the two tile sets um, that I put in Angel this week. So there's say Tile Set 1 and Tile Set 2. Uh, so remember, everything is in the Week 2 Materials folder. All right, so when you open up Tiled, it looks like this, and you're like, oh, well, what the heck am I going to do with that thing? But again, Tiled is free. Um, it's actually kind of cool. So you're going to click on File. Then you're going to click New and accept the default size. And then, then your screen is going to look like this. So from here, you're going to click this little button down here, and you're going to add a tile set. So before you get to this point, you should have downloaded Tile and the two tile sets that are there. And a tile set is just... Um, a sheet with a whole bunch of different tiles on it that all have different uh, sprites on them. So you want to click on that little window there, and then you're going to click Browse, and you're going to find one of the tile sets on your desktop, and you can pick either one. Um, they're both kind of neat. And then you should see something like this, so when you import the tile set, they look like that. So it kind of breaks everything up into its individual squares. You can also add multiple tile sets, so once you add the first tile set, so the first tile set's there, there's only one tab. You can click on that again, and then you can import a second tile set, and then you can kind of switch between the two, um, and you can have multiple tile sets there to play with. So the two tile sets I gave you should be enough to help you get started. So your screen should look something like So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create a ground layer. So you're gonna make a ground layer that includes everything the player can walk on. 
Um, then you're going to make a new layer for things that the player will collide with. And then later we add collision detection so our player can't walk through things. Um, but we'll get to that. So there's a video in your folder for this week under materials that walks you through how to create um, a map here in Tiled. Um, and how to add like the red areas for collision domain. Now remember, you, don't, you just have to add the red boxes. And when you see the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So for your project this week, or your lab, you need to create some kind of map in Tiled and then save it and then submit the Tiled map. Now, don't make it look just like the one that the guy makes in the video. Uh, obviously, that would be too easy. Uh, make some, I don't know, however you want to do it. Just make it a little bit different from the what he makes. Uh, you know, you have all kinds of tiles in there with uh, like castles and trees and different building parts and... Um, based on that in the video, um, just make, you know, and again, it just has to be one little map. It doesn't have to be a big, a whole level or anything like that. Just one map section. And if you have any questions, make drop me an email. Don't forget my office hours. Uh, they're on the syllabus. Um, and that's about it. All right, guys, um, this kind of like starts our project. So we're going to start working with some other things on the side um, as we follow through each week in our main project. And then at the end of the semester, you'll be submitting your, your final 2D game. Uh, and that pretty much wraps it up. So again, if you have any questions, make sure you email me, Angel, or the Stark State email, uh, and you know my office hours. So good luck, guys.